Strassman Live, Volume 2, The Chuck U Tour Review. There's, again, not really much in the way of plot in this. Basically, for the first large portion of the show, Teddy Bear is missing, and every dummy Strassman brings you know, forth in that period of time is asked if they know where he is, and then some other stuff has gone into Teddy, once he does appear, is some of the best, has some of the best moments of the show, I would say. His naivete and innocence is very, very funny when he describes situations, the way he talks. Chuck Wood, the bratty, obnoxious, provocative, little boy made of wood character is again the star and it feels like Strassman is kind of taking the easy way out just tossing something like that up often. You know, he has the most time on stage and it's just such an easy character to do and not that much of the material is really all that memorable. In general, this really feels like he was running out of material. The entire show is about an hour and ten minutes long, eleven minutes long, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. And there's 24 minutes of mostly unfunny extras on the DVD. The one slightly interesting bit is a brief glimpse inside Strassman's workshop. The other characters, we again get Kevin the Alien, who is one of the funniest this time. He has some really good points about the English language. It's some very nice verbal comedy there. And he does still indeed sound like early Blackadder. You know, Rowan Atkinson being kind of annoying. Other than him, we see Grandpa Fred, Teddy Bear's grandfather, who of course has some senility and old person jokes. We have Vinny, the overworked and at the same time kind of lazy dolphin investigative you know, detective. We have three, I guess they're chickens, who are supposed to sing. With several of these, they really don't spend a lot of time on stage. Oh, and Sidney Beaverman returns. I almost forgot him because he appears for so short a period of time. It's really like he wanted to bring the characters back, but couldn't think of a lot of material, or he thought of a little material and figured, okay, I'll just run that, run through that, and then, you know, the next dummy. There are also a couple of parts that are entirely based on the ventriloquism, you know, just the, the craftsmanship. And it is nicely done, it just isn't all that entertaining, you know. It's impressive, but not funny. Especially the very last thing. It's a song, the last thing before the credits. The lyrics are bad, the tune isn't that memorable, and the singing is really not all that good. The sense of humor is again quite twisted and dark. There is, again, some rather disgusting stuff. And there's sexual humor, violent humor. There's some banter back and forth, although not anywhere near as impressive and, I don't know, complex, I suppose is the word, as in the first volume. 
all in all, if you only have money for one of these two volumes, or you're only wanting to spend that amount of money, definitely get volume one. It has all the good stuff. This one actually reuses a bunch of material. Some of it from the first volume, I believe, and some of it from the extra features of the first volume. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why they put stuff on there that was in this show, but yeah. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.